tumultuous development cycles have long plagued video games from conception to release. In some cases, the turmoil stems from poor management. Funding-related issues stifle progress on several occasions as well, and projects that hop from one studio to another in a precarious game of hot potato rarely arrive at the finish line in a respectable state. But what of the titles whose protracted development rested on the back of one vision, fueled by previously well-managed teams with funding from publishers boasting an excess of wealth? The critically panned Too Human from Legacy of Kane and Eternal Darkness creator Silicon Knights fits perfectly into this strange stew of circumstance. What began in the 1990s as an ambitious five-disc adventure for the original PlayStation morphed into a GameCube exclusive after the turn of the century. Leading production on two Nintendo exclusives kept Silicon Knights away from what co-founder and president Dennis Dyack described as the studio's dream project which resurfaced in 2005 as an Xbox 360 game. Two Humans' creation thus spanned three different platforms across three console generations. Unsurprisingly, the Norse mythology-inspired product that Microsoft published in 2008 bore little in common with the Blade Runner-esque build that ran on PS1 during E3 1999. The specifics about what went wrong remain shrouded in mystery, but reports concerning Silicon Knights' management style post-Nintendo paint a pretty clear picture of the rocky road that may have paved the way for Two Humans' disastrous last stand. This is the tragedy of Two Human. This video has been brought to you in part by Kingwind. Today is the day to venture into the wondrous world of wizardry and magic in Hogwarts Legacy. And there's no better place to grab your first class ticket than Kingwin. Head over to kingwin.net where you'll be able to find an entire library of cheap licensed keys for any modern gaming platform and a constant stream of competitive offers for you to benefit from. And thanks to their excellent 24-7 support, any and all issues you may run into will be resolved by Kingwin's team immediately. Once you start shopping, don't forget to use our unique promo code at the checkout to receive a special discount on all your purchases. So click the link in the description to get your discounted Steam or Xbox key for Hogwarts Legacy and start your magical journey today. Co-founded in 1992 by Canadian developer Dennis Dyack, Silicon Knights cut its teeth on the likes of Cyber Empires before making a name for itself with the release of 1996's Blood Omen Legacy of Cain. The crew succeeded in seamlessly blending genres, all while subverting traditional gameplay expectations. This distinctive talent engendered the origins of Two Human, whose conception in 1994 emerged from the company's desire to craft an experience that confronted the issues of technology and its effect on society. In addition, an attempt to tackle the symbiosis between man and machine allowed Silicon Knights a chance at addressing the nature of the human soul. Suffice it to say, the premise alone proved plenty ambitious for the time. Yet Dyak's vision spread further still, revolving around the idea that the in-game world would constantly poke at players for being too human to face incoming threats the only resolution lying in improving their character via cybernetic implants. The technology available in 1994, however, lacked the advancements necessary for such a grandiose experience. But Sony's first PlayStation console seemingly provided a range of possibilities for Two Human, which received a formal unveiling at E3 1999. Initially meant to span five CD-ROMs, Silicon Knight scaled down the proposed content to four discs, suggesting a sprawling adventure the size of Final Fantasy VII. Vague details hinted at an action title with a sci-fi setting and RPG elements, carefully enveloped in an expansive, multi-ending narrative arc. Two Human Story, meanwhile, positioned players in the far-flung future as a cop seeking vengeance following their partner's death at the hands of a cyborg. Comparisons to Blade Runner aside, Two Human appeared novel in many respects, given its promise of pushing the PlayStation's rendering capabilities to the limit with a then-impressive resolution of 520x240p. 
Developers reportedly touted the game's 60 minutes of cinematics spread across 80 hours of gameplay to boot, setting the stage for impossibly high expectations. Expectations that wouldn't be met on any piece of PlayStation hardware. Sony deployed the PlayStation 2 in a staggered worldwide release throughout the year 2000. Early adopters could experience Time Splitters and Dynasty Warriors 2, among other seminal launch titles. Yet news of Too Human continued to elude the public. Little did anyone know, the silence from Silicon Knights could be attributed to the second party agreement it inked with another Japanese giant, Nintendo. The 2002 launch of Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem on Nintendo's sixth generation console may have marked Silicon Knights' first release in six years, but Too Human technically constituted its first GameCube project. Speaking with IGN, Dennis Dyack admitted the title stint on GameCube never left the prototype stage, though the team constructed a 3D engine capable of seamlessly loading areas from the disc. Experiments with the third-person camera took shape during this fleeting period of time as well, but as Eternal Darkness migrated from N64 to GameCube, Silicon Knights temporarily set aside its sci-fi action RPG. Still, progress on the two-human prototype played an instrumental role in building Nintendo's ode to Lovecraftian horror. The GameCube version of Two Human received its sole public showing at Space World 2000 via FMV sequences bearing visuals that teased a product similar to the PlayStation build. In a 2003 interview, however, Dyack claimed the differences between the two iterations would later become more apparent, trumpeting story changes he described as all good and positive. As far as the outside world was concerned, though, these changes would never grace a Nintendo platform. Eternal Darkness consumed studio resources during its incubation, and once development wrapped, the group surprisingly shifted focus to the Twin Snake subtitled Metal Gear Solid remake for GameCube. Again, Two Human vanished from view, although its sidelining provided Silicon Knights the experience of a lifetime, as developers poured over Hideo Kojima's opus, absorbing lessons reflected in the cinematic techniques present in Two Human's eventual final form. Silicon Knights and publisher Konami shipped Twin Snakes in early 2004. While many may have assumed Two Human on GameCube immediately took precedent, Dyack said the crew felt it too late in the generation to enter production on another adventure for the Nintendo system. Development thus moved to the next console generation and, later, an entirely different family of hardware. According to IGN's reporting on Two Human, a minor shakeup of Nintendo's second parties in 2005 culminated in Silicon Knights jumping ship and joining Microsoft. Dyack cited former Nintendo producer Ken Lobb, who departed the company in 2002, as the key to their negotiations with Xbox. Lobb's faith in Two Human inspired the industry veteran to invite his employers at Microsoft into the fold, an opportunity the publisher readily pursued. The fledgling game division acted with gusto, too, signing Silicon Knights for not one, not two, but three Two Human installments. The long gestating sci-fi game stepped into the spotlight yet again at the Microsoft-hosted X05 conference in July 2005 as an Xbox 360 exclusive. Interestingly, Two Human's third reveal had precious few similarities with previously shown iterations. Third-person action remained integral to the gameplay, as did cybernetic enhancements and the man versus machine motif. Players would no longer assume the role of a vengeful futuristic cop, however. Rather, a revised premise heightened by Norse mythology centralized the god Baldur as a cybernetic protagonist, one tasked with protecting humanity against machine giants and otherworldly monsters. The new and supposedly improved narrative arc couldn't be contained in a singular entry, hence Microsoft's early investment in a two-human trilogy. In a GDC 2006 interview with Wired, Dyack likened his team's vision to Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings, noting that a complete three-part story had been orchestrated from the start. Video games demanded a similar level of long-term commitment, he argued, and since interactive experiences typically required several years of production, Silicon Knights produced the first game and its sequel in parallel. The follow-up, of course, never so much as received an official announcement. It is, uh, too human. Now, 
guys, I think the big thing about this game is this game has been kind of rumored to be in existence for over 10 years, is this correct? Yeah, 12 years, 12 yeah. years. Now, obviously, there must have been some technological reasons why you couldn't do it then, and then what is happening now that you can make it come to life? Well, the exciting thing about now is with, with the Xbox 360, we've always wanted to make entertainment the dominant form of entertainment for this century, and with the 360, we can actually now create production value that is competitive with the movie theaters. So, so now, if, if you look at some of the graphics in the game while you're playing, we can make it look lifelike and realistic, and at the same time, with an interactive camera system, we can make it look like Hollywood. So. All right. And I think I should point out that in the very end... Dennis Dyack harbored lofty ideals about the way in which critics and players might perceive too human. Throughout various interviews, he expressed thoughts of the project potentially establishing a new gold standard that would put to rest the age-old question of whether games warranted recognition as an art form. He hoped too human would erase the gap between gameplay and story, for instance, given its so-called Hollywood production values. Even the works of Shakespeare garnered a shout-out, with the studio president lauding the bard's ability to inject dirty jokes into his plays for commoners, while simultaneously employing cerebral metaphors to engage aristocrats. Too human, Dyack alleged, played host to similar storytelling complexities. Few people were impressed, evidenced in responses to the action RPG's E3 2006 showing, which ran the gamut from mixed to negative. Outlets across the industry criticized the poor frame rate, lack of camera control, and less than stellar graphical quality. Yet EGM's negative coverage endured the bulk of Dyek's ire. The developer appeared on an episode of the EGM podcast in 2007, ranting at length about the publication's preview. Uh, quite frankly, in that, as you're taking, so you're taking back all the positive things that Shane had said about Too Human, and you're saying it's not true, and essentially you wouldn't show this at a science fair, and um, I, I got to tell you, I, again, I don't understand the level of harshness from a... I almost feel that I, I look at this and go, wow, did, did, did I step on your foot or <laughs> did, I, did, I, did, I, did I say something bad? I just don't know where that came from. His combative defense of Too Human didn't end there either, even stretching to online disputes with fans on forums such as NeoGAF. In terms of public reception, the increasingly controversial antics of the Silicon Knights boss were of no help to Too Human, a product that many had grown wary of in the months leading up to its August 2008 release on Xbox 360. And after roughly 10 years of development hell, multiple delays, and at least three reboots, the sci-fi fantasy hybrid landed with a resounding thud, offering a below-average to middling adventure that left critics and players feeling as though the prolonged buildup had resulted in nothing of consequence. The issues that beset the experience were numerous, from an unstable camera and technical woes to repetitive gameplay and broken co-op promises. Two Humans' narrative largely received lukewarm reception, though most agreed it suffered from the absence of a well-rounded payoff, the perils of a tale designed for a three-game arc that never materialized. But these shortcomings merely represented the beginnings of a once-storied studio's early demise. Unreal Engine 3 uses a per-pixel lighting model, which allows for advanced effects like high dynamic range lighting, as you can see on this fountain. Assets in this scene were constructed in three steps. First, we build a very detailed... Silicon Knight signed a licensing agreement with Epic Games in 2005 ensuring the group's future ventures would exclusively run on Unreal Engine 3. Dyack spoke favorably of the technology early on, commending its flexibility in ongoing updates. This honeymoon phase came to a screeching halt in July 2007, when Silicon Knight sued Epic for breach of contract, alleging the latter hadn't completed Unreal Engine 3 and used licensing dollars to fund Gears of War. Epic swiftly filed a countersuit, issuing a statement that argued the Canadian company knew of the engine's limitations and had no right to make modifications. The counterclaim further accused Silicon Knights of misappropriating Unreal Engine code for proprietary technology and using the resulting tools to build a Sega published game, effectively infringing upon and otherwise violating Epic's IP rights. In May 2012, proceedings involving the original lawsuit and counterclaim ended in Epic's favor. Judge James C. Deaver III ruled that Silicon Knights deliberately and repeatedly copied Epic's copyrighted code a transgression compounded by the studio's removal of copyright notices in an attempt to pass off the code as its own. The court awarded Epic Games $4.45 million in damages. 
Deaver's ruling also ordered the destruction of unsold copies of Two Human and Silicon Knights' 2011 RPG, X-Men Destiny. This mandate applied to other in-development projects, reportedly forcing the cancellation of Two Human 2, Eternal Darkness 2, and a Silent Hill-style survival horror title for Sega. In May 2014, two years after the initial court ruling, Silicon Knights filed for bankruptcy and ceased operations. The underhanded way in which Silicon Knights exploited the Epic licensing deal aligned with other accusations leveled against the company. Reports of Dyack's allegedly substandard management practices surfaced in 2012, when a whistleblower reached out to Andrew McMillan, the journalist who'd previously penned an expose on LA noir developer Team Bondi's toxic work environment. After speaking to the whistleblower and seven other ex-staffers, McMillan wrote a piece for Kotaku detailing what reportedly went wrong with X-Men Destiny. Some of the claims overlapped with Two Humans' development. The whistleblower asserted that many of the Team Bondi allegations applied to Silicon Knights. Like LA Noir's Brendan McNamara, Dennis Dyack supposedly thought little of his employees, often referring to artists as easily replaceable. A self-described benevolent dictator, Dyack was said to rule the company with absolute power. He made examples of those who offended him, for instance, and boasted an irrationally competitive personality believing people were either for or against him. And though many attribute Silicon Knights' biggest success to the Nintendo deal, Macmillan's sources insisted the studio had thought of the publisher as oppressive. Former employees, on the other hand, argued that Nintendo played an integral role in the triumphs of Eternal Darkness and Twin Snakes. Still, Dyack generally perceived all publisher relations as parasitic and wasted no time in stringing them along. Silicon Knights' approach thus began by signing a contract for a fairly low amount promising to deliver massive fantastical worlds. As an added bonus, Eternal Darkness's critical acclaim provided the perfect leverage during such dealings. This tactic apparently helped the company broker agreements with Microsoft, Sega, and Activision. To give the impression of steady progress on the agreed-upon project, several sources stated Silicon Knights would spend months sending assets to its partner. The materials included concept art, character models, and the like, even though the content carried little weight in the grand scheme of things. Dyack's fickle directing style only exacerbated the situation, further delaying updates to publishers. Then the request for 6-12 to 12 month extensions would start, drastically increasing the game's budget. It's no wonder, then, that Two Human formerly counted among the most expensive games ever made, with an estimated budget of over $60 million. Regardless of the finer details, Two Human had every opportunity to exceed expectations. The final vision offered something unique, as Norse mythology clashed with futuristic technology. More than one major publisher supported the project, giving the studio free reign to explore its dream game to the fullest extent. Due to mismanagement, hubris, or another unknown factor, Silicon Knights squandered these opportunities, leaving behind a meager experience that many waited 10 years to play only for it to have largely been forgotten shortly after release. A true tragedy indeed. Thank you for watching. We'd like to take this time to thank, by name, the generous patrons who have pledged to our Hall of Fame reward tier, Alex Moretti, and those currently subscribed to our producer reward tier, Brock Piviroto, Darirap Sigurdsson, GetWrecked.com, Jonathan, Kira May, Landy K. Hayes, Mario Herrera, Milkshake. If you enjoy our content, please consider subscribing to our channel and backing us on Patreon.